as long as you know three approach for primary knee replacement, the 90% gold standard medial patellar exceptionally to improve the quadricep function and to theoretically improve the blood supply of the flap, you may go mid-vestus and sub-vestus approach. So these are the uh, experimental approach. This is the standard approach. As far as the complex knee, sometimes they may say, do you know any other approach if the joint is complex? So we said that you should remember three other approaches. One is quadriceps snip. One is you turn the whole quadriceps downward, so downward turning of the quadricep. And the other is you actually osteomize the tibial tuberosity. Uh, so tibial tuberosity osteotomy, downward turning, and quadricep snip are three complex. Medial parapetular, mid-vestus, and sub-vestus are used for primary. So you should know the three approaches. And then we said you have actually opened the joint and you are uh, with medial parapetular. Now the femur is looking at you. How do you decide the bony cuts of the femur? Most of the surgeon will do the femur first, although you can do a tibia first. So most of surgeon do the femur first. And then we went through that. The uh, two things we need to know for distal cut. Distal cut is not size dependent. It is the angle and the thickness of the cuts. That's what we want to know from the distal. So for that, all of you should know these few lines, which are very important for your exam. So first forget all other lines, just say from, if from the pubic symphysis, if you drop a, uh, like a plumb line, you drop in the spine. If you draw a vertical line, this is called the vertical axis, just a normal uh, 90 degree angle from pubic symphysis to your ground, 90 degree to ground. That's your vertical axis. Uh, normally, your knee joint line is 90 degree to this vertical line. So when you're standing on the ground, the joint line is 90 degree to this. But unfortunately, you can't uh, find this vertical axis during the operation. During the operation, the only thing you have available to you easily is the anatomical axis of the femur and anatomical axis of the tibia. So how do we get our joint line 90 degree to this? That was the concept we uh, we tried to explore. One way to is 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 to not look for vertical axis, but look for mechanical axis. So what is mechanical axis? Mechanical axis is from the femur femoral head center to the center of the talus, and normally that mechanical axis passes through the middle of the knee joint. So if you know the mechanical axis. And if you know the angle between the vertical axis and mechanical axis, which is actually three degrees. So normally the joint is not 90 degree to mechanical axis. So always remember this concept. A lot of students don't have this concept. They think that uh, the normal joint is 90 degree to the vertical axis, but not to mechanical axis. Actually the normal joint we mentioned uh, is about uh, three degree varus to the mechanical axis. So normal, knee will be about, where is the pen? Okay, so normal knee we said is not 90 degree to mechanical axis, but it is three degree varus to the mechanical axis and 90 degree to the vertical axis. But we try to cut uh, three deg 90 degree to mechanical axis. So we are actually creating a slightly valgus cut to your tibia. So you are externally rotating or valgusizing the tibia to three degree and then you want to cut the femur also 90 degree to mechanical axis so that the joint lines are parallel. So you can forget this at the moment because this is not easily replicable. Although nowadays, a lot of people want to cut the joint 90 degree to vertical axis, but that's a only two, 3% of the knee joint being done. Most of our knee joint is along the mechanical axis. So remember our aim is to put the joint in 90 degree with the mechanical axis, which is actually three degree uh, uh, valgus to the normal joint line, okay? So that's the first concept you need to understand that it is not a normal joint line we are achieving. We are achieving slightly abnormal, but we want it about uh, 90 degree to mechanical axis. So this is again the same concept. The normal joint line is tilted like this one. Uh, so you can say this is 87 degree or three degree varus. So from your normal mechanical axis, normal joint is about 87 degree and 90 degree to your vertical axis. But we, we decided we want to cut 90 degree 
to your mechanical axis uh, rather than three degree varus. And we discussed why we want it, because if we cut this angle that is about 87 degree to mechanical axis, normally it's a, uh, there is an error of plus minus three degree. So if you cut here, uh, 87 degree, and if your error become 84 or 83 degrees or 84, 85 degrees, then this much virus is very detrimental for a knee replacement. Whereas if you go two or three degree towards the valgus, that is actually not too bad. So we decided we were error towards valgus rather than the virus. And that's why we decided we will go not 87, we'll go 90 degree to a mechanical axis. Having said that, nowadays people have started using these other axes, the vertical axis, and want to cut 90 degree to, uh, to that axis rather than mechanical axis. But those are called kinematic alignment or anatomical alignment. And that's all you need to know about it, that there are some people who are using anatomical because that's what the anatomy is which is uh, 87 degree to your mechanical axis. But we normally, 90% of the knee are still being done with this method, mechanical alignment, which is mean you draw your mechanical axis and try to cut 90 degree to it, both tibia and femur. So that's what we explained last time, and that's what we most of the surgeons will do. The next question come is, how do you calculate, uh, because you don't have the mechanical axis during the surgery, Either you get your X-ray machine and put a dot on the femur uh, and a dot on the tip on the talus and calculate the mechanical axis and then decide your angle, or you preoperatively can decide if you know the mechanical axis and the anatomical axis of the femur. So how do we do this? Normally in a knee replacement, uh, if you if you're doing a knee replacement for valgus and varus actually the mechanical axis of the lower limb. So, so far we were talking about mechanical axis of the lower limb, normally either go outside as in valgus or goes inside as in varus. So this is uh, difficult to calculate from your anatomical axis if you rely on the mechanical axis of the lower limb. But what we decided is that because the, because the diaphysius remains same, it is the angle you change at the joint line for varus and valgus. So diaphysis axis remains same. So we calculated actually the mechanical axis of the femur and mechanical axis of the tibia separately. So now we're talking of mechanical axis of the femur and mechanical axis of the tibia separately. And we know in tibia, the mechanical axis and the anatomical axis are same. Whereas in femur, because femur, uh, is the shaft is shifted uh, on the lateral side. If you know this angle, you can then cut the same angle here and get your cut 90 degree to mechanical axis. So that's important fact to understand. We went last time in detail about it, that in normal uh, knee replacement, preoperatively, you should have a full length x-rays where you can calculate this is your anatomical axis line, uh, line two. This is your mechanical axis now of femur. Remember, this is mechanical axis, not lower limb. Mechanical axis of the femur, that is from center of the hip to the center of the knee joint. That's mechanical axis of the femur. And the angle it makes, if you cut with that angle here, you will get your cut 90 degree to the mechanical axis. And that's why we, uh, calculate that angle. So remember three, uh, now you got three lines to remember or four lines. One is the vertical axis. The second is the mechanical axis of the whole limb. The third is mechanical axis of the femur and mechanical axis of the tibia. And then the anatomical axis of tibia and anatomical axis of the femur. So you need these five lines when you're talking about a knee replacement. And how do you get your distal cut angle? You difference between the mechanical axis of the femur and the uh, anatomical axis of the femur. Whatever angle you cut, that's the angle you cut, and then you will get 90 degree to it. So that's what we discussed last time. So this is what you should do preoperatively. A lot of time the examiner will ask that in your institution, do you have facilities to have these long leg films? And quite often we don't have these facilities uh, or they can be very expensive and high radiation. 
what we do is do a guesswork. We know that normally this angle is between five to seven degree, yeah? And normally uh, in female patients, you will have more towards seven degree. In male patient, you will have towards more toward five degree. And even if the patient is very tall, uh, then he may have four degrees. And if patient is very short or short female, she may have eight degrees. So what if you don't have your mechanical anatomical axis available to you, then you do guesswork. And that's actually, this guesswork is done by 70, 80% of orthopedic surgeon world over. So we cut either, normally we cut everybody six degree, that's an average, or we cut five degree for male, seven degree for female. These are all guesswork. Or we decide if it is very short female, then we cut uh, eight degree. And if it is very tall, lean male, we cut about four degree. So these are all guesswork, provided there is no deformity in the femur. Remember, if the, if the femur shaft is deformed, you cannot use the anatomical axis. Then you have to calculate that somewhere else, either with computer assisted or long leg film beforehand to calculate that. So that is not, uh, uh, it is only if you assume the femur diaphysis is normal. Uh, so this is how we said, uh, we calculate the distal angle and depending on the angle available to you, you can cut uh, whatever angle, three, six, nine degree to, to anatomical axis. And hopefully that will be 90 degree to your mechanical axis. So the angle you decide is with respect to your anatomical axis when you put your jig in, uh, but that angle, whatever angle, so suppose this is six degree, should be 90 degree to your mechanical axis. That's your aim.